friends, this is Andrew Phipps, and I do welcome you to our Faith, Family, and Freedom program today. And we start with some wonderful news on this 24th day of June, and I know this program will be shown in many places around July the 4th, but the Supreme Court has overruled, overturned Roe v. Wade from 1973. When I was teaching government, I thought of some of the most despicable decisions the court had made in its history, like the Dred Scott case in 1857, or Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896. But I believe the founding fathers, Adams, Jefferson, I think Franklin, Livingston, and Sherman would be happy today to know that as Judge Clarence Thomas has said, the Roe v. Wade, one of the most despicable decisions by the court of the land in our history has been overturned. Now it's up to the states to do with it according to the values and the constituents in each state. But as far as the U.S. Supreme Court ruling that there is no inherent right within the Constitution for the right to abort or kill a baby. Now, I've looked at the Constitution many, many times, read it, and uh, I'm not a constitutional attorney, but I can assure you from my limited perspective, from a layman's position, I've always felt that this was ruling uh, not by, uh, by constitutional edict, but simply ruling according to how the courts wanted it to be. So I'm thankful that on this time as we get close to the celebration of America's independence, that we once again have upheld liberty and that we have decided along with our founding fathers that the right to life is very precious. That's what Jefferson and those folks said in the Declaration of Independence. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So I'm sure that you're agreeing with me this is a wonderful decision. I just pray that those radical people or those inclined to violence will not do anything to harm any of our members of the court. And I would say that regardless of the decision, it's never uh, right to do wrong. And so let's pray for the safety of the members of the court. But by a six to three landmark decision, as far as the court affirming, there is no constitutional right to abort a baby. And we'll be back in just a little bit. It's been a credible energy already, even leading up to his speech. What brought you here? I'm Andrew Phipps, and I taught government for a number of years, and we have several television stations where we do faith family and freedom where and can people find them by the way i don't mean to interrupt but so people where, where are those stations well we're on in southern michigan we're on in northern ohio south bend indianapolis a big part of kentucky and tennessee on living faith we're on greenville spartanburg jo atlanta georgia great parts of america absolutely you know, I want to thank you, first of all, that you would invite us to be here. Great. I think of quotes many times. Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th president, said, To educate a man in mind and not in morals is to educate a menace to society. Mm. And when I think of where we are today, Thomas Jefferson also said, If a nation expects to be ignorant and free. Mm. It expects what never was and never will be. We are in troublesome times socially, and I just met again Miss Smith here, who is the nominee in the first district in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and I certainly wish her well, but I'm trying to do my best as I speak around the country to remind folks that we are an exceptional nation. The Bible says blessed is uh, God who's God whose nation is the Lord's. And so I really think that between the economic and the political, we've lost out on our spiritual and moral values. Our nation is upside down. You know, when I was growing up, grass was something we mowed. <laughs> I mean, Coke was something we drank. And AIDS were the people that worked in the principal's office. Oh, oh boy. And coming out of the closet meant we'd been playing hide and go see. Oh, boy. Here he goes. He's on anyway, a roll. Anyway, I don't want to take the time from Miss Smith, but what an honor that you would allow me to be a part of oh, your we programming and to be able to articulate 
what I think are some very important issues. What I'm concerned about is our children and our grandchildren. I Absolutely. don't want to see the greatest nation that ever has been to see it destroyed. I don't want us to become a communist nation, an atheist nation where there are no values. I don't want, as Ronald Reagan once said, our grandchildren having to ask what was it once like yeah. to live in a nation where people were free. And, w and when people like Reagan said that, people, I, I imagine, I mean, I was young, but that there were many who said, oh, that will never be a communist. Right. And we feel now, no way, we're descending into some chaos. I, I want you to keep going, but I also want to include you. What keeps you hopeful about America? What makes you think we're going to see better days? Well, we, ha we have opportunity to make change in 2022. Uh, we have to stop this craziness that we're seeing with our children being indoctrinated. Yeah. The groomers are after our children. Um, it's terrible when we have state legislators that are pushing to, uh, to sexualize our children from kindergarten through third grade. It's awful. And we have to have Christians, evangelicals, get active, get motivated, get out there and vote. We only had 20% of evangelicals come out and vote in 2020. If we had maybe 5% more, we would have swung elections all over the country. Good point. And, and that's what we have to do. We have to get motivated. We have to get activated. And that's why it's so important for all of us to get out and vote. I mean, families are going to continue to suffer under the Biden Pelosi regime. They, they just are. And until we make change and, and take action and take back the House and the Senate, we're going to continue to suffer. And, and you remember, I think it was Mark Hatfield, the late senator from Oregon, my, Oregon. Mm -hmm. and at the 1988 prayer breakfast, he made these remarks. Mm. He said, for the Christian man to reason that God does not want him involved in politics because it's too dirty <laughs> is as insensitive as a Christian doctor refusing to go to an epidemic because there are too many germs there. That's where you need to go, where there's problems Spiritual and clean war. it out and fix it, right? Yes, uh, like I said, I, I know that we've had our faults. Uh, I believe there's no such thing as a free lunch. I learned that in Economics 101. Yep. And I'm thankful for Sandy Smith here, and I believe that she'll do well if we can get the message out uh, to the base that she's trying to reach. But again, our posterity, that's what it says in our preamble to the Constitution, yeah. that we're trying to do something not only for me, but for your legacy and your legacy and that's what it's all about i i mean what a privilege though a privilege that i would be invited to be a oh, part of your welcome. audience and to be able maybe to say some things that might help somebody we've got to educate we've got to advocate and we've got to participate boy that's awesome that's awesome well, thank you said for being before a part of our we're community. an exceptional nation why is it that democrats don't want to say that they don't want to say america is exceptional they want to tear it down because i think they actually hate our country they hate everything about it they want to fundamentally change everything they've they've said that it's not like they're hiding behind you know closed doors and saying it they're out in the in the open so we need to make sure we are electing true patriots people that love this country and want to see it succeed not you know strangle us by shutting down our gas lines and and kill businesses and you know, families are having to make a decision whether they pay for gas or put food on the table. It's it's terrible, and that's what the Democrats want. You, Get the last word, sir. You remember at the nineteen and eighty four celebration? Boy, this guy he's pulling every, every 88, 84. The history is awesome. Thank you, sir. It is. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Ronald Reagan at Normandy. Yep. He called those boys there the boys of Point du Hoc, mm -hmm. and he talked about how that 225 people tried to go up those cliffs, only 95 made it. Most people did make it ashore. The weight of the carbine in the water held them down. But he said something that's so important. He said that in Georgia, people were gathering in the church houses at 4 o'clock to pray. He said in Kansas, people were gathering together to pray. Franklin Roosevelt, the progressive president, gave a six minute address and he called the nation to prayer. And he said that, uh, I think it was one of the admirals there said, don't look down, man, when you hit the water, said, look up wow. and here are these boys, 17, 
18 and 19 years of age, just fresh out of high school, are facing the enemy. I've been privileged to go there to Normandy, be there I've at Omaha there. and Utah and see those places. What a heritage. What I'm wondering, do we have the same kind of tenacity? Do we have the same kind of commitment in this generation that would leave home knowing that you're facing probably sudden death when you hit those shores? You're but when one would fall, Reagan said another would take his place. Mm. What a powerful nation we have. These folks had come through the Depression. They knew what hard times were all about. They knew difficult situations. Yeah. And that's why important that we help Sandy Smith that I just <laughs> met again to get into the Congress. And say amen. Incredible. Amen. The greatest generation. He's preaching today. We appreciate it. Thank God you. Thanks for being part of this, sir. God bless you. It's an honor. Again, thank you for extending that kind of honor to me. We appreciate it. And check them out. Yeah. Give us the name and, and uh, the, the company with the station. Andrew Phipps. We're on YouTube under Faith, Family, and Freedom. And uh, Andrew Phipps, P-H-I-P-P-S. And again, you'll never know what this moment has meant to me so in, in our senior years here. Wow. You got a long way to go, and we'll be there for it. On this very important uh, time of year, when we go out for our picnics, fireworks, you know, John Adams wanted fireworks. He wanted it to be noised abroad within the land at that time to let the people know that liberty reigns and that liberty is is being proclaimed throughout the, the, the world. And so when they rang the Liberty Bell, that was to give approbation to the fact that we are now separated from the mother country, that we are self-governing, and that's what we wanted. I hope that you, along with me, will make this a time not only of celebration, but we will also pray, as Benjamin Franklin asked later at the Constitutional Convention, that there be a time of prayer, that we pray for this country. Franklin made a great proclamation. He said, of a truth I perceive, that the longer I live, I came to the knowledge that if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, how can empires rise without his aid? And I believe that's altogether true. You know, liberty lies in our hearts. If it dies there, there's no law, there's no constitution that can resurrect it. But when it's alive, the spirit of liberty, as we've seen from time immoral, immemorial, from time and mortality that we have witnessed it around the world. When people want to be free, I mean, they will make a way. We're going to be back with more good information after these special times. <music> I see evil everywhere. It's just as God, it's just as God said, it would be. said it would be. If I didn't read the Bible, I'd say no one has a prayer. But in its precious pages, this is what I see. Forever King and Lord of glory, Jesus Christ and He alone has made transgression ransom for me as for sin He did atone. He was crucified on Calvary, and He took away the sting. Of this world are finally done. He'll part the clouds. He'll part the clouds. With flashing light. With flashing light. On the throne that once was David's, all the kingdoms will be one. We'll proclaim all hail the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Forever King and Lord of glory, Jesus Christ and He alone has made transgression.
confession ransom for me as for sin he did atone he was crucified on calvary and he took away the sting Ransom for me as for sin he did atone. He was crucified on Calvary and he took away the sting. Ransom for me as for sin he did atone. He was crucified on Calvary and he took away the sin. missionary, Sam Ward, who is a missionary to Croatia. I'm here in the foyer of the Midway Baptist Church in Elyria, Ohio. And Brother Sam Ward comes to this meeting quite frequently, and this is where I got to meet him. And Brother Sam, it's good to have you with us today. It's very good to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, it's our honor on Faith, Family, and Freedom. Oh, I want uh, you to get the people acquainted a little bit with Croatia. There might be people like myself that maybe could uh, be uh, further enhanced with what they know about this country. All right, I'll sure do it. Uh, Croatia was one of the countries that made up the former Yugoslavia. And uh, in 1991, they declared their independence. Uh -huh. And they fought a brutal four-year war with Serbia to gain that independence. So they became an independent nation only in 1995. And uh, they're dominated by the Catholic religion. Uh -huh. And uh, they, <clears throat> they have a struggling economy. They changed from a socialist economy to a democratic, <clears throat> excuse me, a democratic republic. And uh, now they have a lot of tourism income they depend on that a, a great deal and uh, they have a, an agrarian society there too a lot of a lot of agricultural out there climate what would do we have anything in the states that would be comparable to croatia maybe do you have four seasons there we do have four seasons over there we sure do it's um it's not as hot over there as it gets in texas but the humidity over there is fairly high so I, i'm from texas headquartered uh, or home based in Texas and uh, in Texas it can get up to 104 or 105 and you feel pretty hot but in Croatia if it's 90 degrees with the humidity it's very very hot. How many people are in Croatia? There's a population there of four, mil four million people right at four million. I believe one of the aspects of your ministry is that you pass out a lot of Bibles. Yes sir we do. When I first went there I got heavily involved in the Bible translation project we translated the King James Bible into the Croatian language, and uh, we received our first shipment of Bibles in 2018. And uh, we've been very busy passing those out, distributing them. We've received a second container and now a third container oh, wonderful. of, of 24,000 Bibles. Are the people receptive to your offering them a Bible? Uh, they do seem to be quite receptive of a free Bible. They have a hard time believing anything is free. There are so many people over there that act like they're giving something away and then they want to charge for it, uh, people are skeptical. But once you can convince them, they will accept it. Have you uh, acclimated? Well, before I say that, you've been there how many years? I've been in Croatia now for 12 years. Well, have you acclimated to that country pretty good? I absolutely love it. The Lord enabled me to purchase a home there a year and a half ago. And I love that country and I intend to spend the rest of my life there. 
Isn't that amazing? That is so amazing. And you said you were from Texas? Yes, sir. Originally from, from Texas. Where about uh, from the, I lived in the Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth area most recently uh, for about 20 years, but I grew up in West Texas around Big Spring in a very desert type mm -hmm. climate. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you're maybe making some progress there? I do. I feel like we will be making further progress as we can continue to saturate the country with the Bible. I think the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, just like it says. And uh, once the Bible can be spread throughout that country, I believe God can do great things. Uh huh. Well, uh, so I was asking you earlier about uh, in one of the meetings, they have uh, the food choices are similar, aren't they? A lot of pork. I have a lot of pork, a lot of chicken, and they absolutely are in love with French fries. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Which blesses me too. <laughs> do you like the do you, do you like the pastries there? Uh, the pastries there to me don't have quite enough filling in them. If they had a little more cherry filling and so forth, that would be even better. But do you have a home church there? Uh, we uh, my uh, the man that I went to work with, Johnny Leslie. Uh, he started a church there, started now two churches there, and one of those I lead the singing in that church, and that's what I would consider my home church there. Well, that is wonderful. I just want to thank you, brother, not thank only you. for your friendship. You've been an encouragement to me, and I wish you Godspeed in Croatia. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate that. It's always my pleasure. If you'd like to have any of our products, we do have a Faith, Family, and Freedom handbook. We have some DVDs. We did one with Pastor Jim Scudder in Washington, D.C. a little over a year ago. It's called, Can You Find God in D.C.? I think you will enjoy the beautiful programming that was done in the Jefferson and Lincoln Memorials and other places. If you want any of our products, just call us or get in touch with us, as would be indicated there on the screen. It's time to plan for the 47th Annual Southern Gospel Singing at Sea Cruise. Join Andrew and Shirlene Phipps as you depart from Port Canaveral for the trip, January 30th through February 3rd, 2023, for warm sunshine and tropical breezes in the Caribbean. With 30 of the top Southern Gospel groups in the nation, you will be entertained and you'll be inspired by the best in Southern Gospel preaching. Dine on delicious foods, see the sights, and bask in the warm glow of Christian fellowship on the world's largest all-Christian cruise to the Bahamas. Hurry, because this trip of a lifetime sells out fast. All that is needed now is a small deposit, and you can continue to pay over time. For more information, call Andrew Phipps at 765-744-4239. The weather is heating up, and so are the deals. It's time for spring specials at Sam Pierce Chevrolet in Daleville. Lease a new Chevy Equinox LS for only $159 a month, or lease a new Chevy Blazer for just $269 per month. Save thousands on nearly 200 pre-owned vehicles in stock, all with a warranty and complimentary maintenance. Hurry, once these vehicles are gone, so are the special prices. Don't miss out on the spring specials, only at Sam Pierce Chevrolet. The best Chevy deals are in the country. Friends, it was a wonderful delight to be able to participate in the Freedom Coalition, The Road to Majority, hosted by Dr. Ralph Reed in Nashville, Tennessee on June the 5th. And it was a wonderful time, and we were able to do an interview there with uh, Real America's Voice. We also had a small interview with CNN, but I don't think it ever got posted. But regardless, it was a great opportunity to meet a lot of important people, people like Senator Bill Haggerty, Senator Rick Scott, uh, Betsy DeVos, who was the former Secretary of Education under President Trump. And we'll have some more of that in future programs. But again, as we think about this time of the year, when we will be going to parades and cookouts and getting with family and friends, it's again, it's just a part of Americana. I thank God for the freedoms that we still have, and it's up to me and you to maintain them. We have to be vigilant. We have to be aware, and we have to participate. We need to be 
knowledgeable about the events as much as we can and help one another. And I think we can do that in your associations. And when you go to church or when you get with friends, I think we can all uh, give testimony of the fact that this is an exceptional country and the fact that we are 246 years from our inception or since we declared our independence, liberty is still in our hearts. I hope you have a wonderful uh, holidays and a great time at this season. I'll look forward to being with you every opportunity, but until that very special time, this is Andrew Phipps. Have a wonderful day. Phipps Faith, Family and Freedom presented by Clemens Home Solutions and Heritage Funeral Care.